Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, at the very outset, I would like to express my deepest gratitude uh, to the departments of psychology and sociology at college for having invited me to be a part of this uh, very important program on the occasion of the World Mental Health Day. Uh, for my short speech, for my very short speech, I have prepared a PPT, uh, which I would like to share with you all. Now, uh, I would just like to start with uh, the theme, the theme for this year's World Mental Health Day. If we look at this year's World Mental Health Day, if we look at this year's World Mental Health Day, the World Health Organization has, has uh, come up with their campaign, which centers around the theme, investing in mental health. So I'm, through my speech today, I will be sharing a bit on investing in mental health, the campaign investing in mental health. Now, looking at the health argument that was given by the World Health Organization, it's alarming to see that depression is one of the leading causes of illness and disability among adolescents today. And what's even more alarming is the fact that one in five children and adolescents has a mental disorder. And it's even stated that suicide is the second leading cause of death for young people aged 15 to 29 years. Now, coming back to the present scenario and the various challenges that people have faced due to the COVID-19 this year has in fact really highlighted the importance of mental health and well-being globally. And even among our own people uh, here in Nagaland. And in a way, you could say that uh, this pandemic, this COVID-19 has raised uh, an even greater awareness on mental health conditions and how we need to start investing in our mental health. Now, against the backdrop of this and the sufferings of so many people with various mental health conditions, uh, the WHO has called upon each one of us to start investing in our mental health. The WHO advocates us to do something which is life affirming. So as individuals, you and I need to start taking an interest in taking care of our mental health and we need to start taking concrete actions in support of our mental health. And in addition, I feel that it's still, it's again very important for us to start supporting all our friends and family members who may be struggling with their own mental health problems. So uh, keeping this in mind, so keeping all this in mind, um, I decided that, you know, instead of dwelling so much on the negative aspects of mental health, on the stati statistics of mental disorders, uh, I thought for this uh, year's Mental World Health Day, I would like each one of us to instead focus more on finding simple ways on how we can start caring for, for our mental health, how we need to uh, look for easy everyday techniques that we can use for better mental health. So what I've done today is uh, for, for this program, I would like to share with you all a couple of uh, tips that I have come up with for you and I to uh, start taking care of our mental health. Now, these are simple, uh, simple techniques or strategies that we can use, that uh, you and I can use uh, in our everyday life, in, in our challenges, in our dealings with our everyday challenges uh, in our lives. Now, 
these are techniques and tips that I have used personally in my life. I have experienced it. Uh, I have used these uh, tips and I have found it to be quite effective. And hence, I have come up with these couple of techniques, uh, which I hope will inspire you all to start utilizing in your own lives. So these are the 10 things that you can do for your mental health tips that actually worked for me. So the first tip that I would like to share with you all today is positive self-talk. Now, this is a very important mental health tip. Uh, on days that I'm feeling a bit low or, or, or when I'm simply having a bad day, uh, what I like to do is I like to pause, I like to reflect on my emotions, and then I try to turn my, my negative thoughts into positive ones. And in doing so, uh, it instantly lifts my mood, it improves my mood, and acts as a mood booster. And a lot of research uh, studies have even shown that uh, positive self-talk is indeed very, very helpful for a lot of mental disorders such as uh, anxiety and depression. So that's the first tip that I would like to share with you all today, which is positive self-talk. Now, the next tip that I would like to share is expressing gratitude. Now, again, a very simple and easy thing to do, which, uh, but which we forget to do in our everyday lives. So again, on days that uh, I'm filled with negative thoughts or when I'm, I'm having a bad day, uh, again, I try to focus, I try to redirect my negative thoughts, my negative emotions, and I try to instead focus on being grateful being grateful for all that I have and all that I am. So this technique, this exercise really again uh, shifts my mood. It helps improve my mood and uh, really helps uh, with my mental health. So again, a lot of research studies have shown that when you express gratitude, when you live a grateful life, it can really lead to increased positive thoughts it can lead to a less negative effect, which is, again, emotions. You tend to feel less negative emotions. And uh, overall, you enjoy a more um, healthy physical functioning as well. Now, the next tip that I would like you to do is uh, pursue a hobby. Now, I'm sure that a lot of you have, have your own interests and your own hobbies. Now, uh, when it comes to my hobbies, I like knitting, I like reading, and recently I've started a new hobby, which is gardening. I've just recently started caring for house plants, and these, these are the kinds of hobbies that, that feels extremely therapeutic to me. These are the kinds of hobbies that, that really taps into my creativity and productivity as well. So again, these uh, hobbies um, which I engage in on a daily basis really helps elevate my mood instantly. So this is a tip that I would like you all to follow, pursuing a hobby. Now, the next tip that, again, uh, which is good for your mental health is taking a break from social media. Now, most of us are in today's generation generation, most of us are addicted to our social media, our apps, our phones, right? Now, you'll find that a lot of people are addicted to Instagram, to Facebook, to WhatsApp, okay? Now, looking at a lot of research studies that has been done in this area, okay? Again, uh, it has shown that, that uh, it has shown that social media can really hamper your, your mental health it does have a lot of negative effect on, on one's mental health. And the constant use of social media, of various social media like, like Instagram, like, like Facebook, can lead to a lot of mental disorders like, like insomnia, like anxiety, like depression. So a good tip for you would be to start taking short breaks from your social media usage and if possible, I would recommend that you start taking short breaks even from your phone. 
So that's the fourth tip that I would like to share. Now, the next tip is, again, something very personal, which has proven quite effective for me, for my mental health, reading the Bible and journaling. So uh, I have learned that when I read the Bible, when I study the Bible, and when I start journaling, I feel at peace. I feel a great uh, sense of, of uh, satisfaction and uh, peace. So again, reading the Bible, studying the Bible, and actually journaling, taking the time to journal, taking the time for some devotional uh, time by myself has really helped uh, in unburdening all my fears, my anxieties, my worries. So again, journaling has journaling or what we call as expressive writing in psychology okay so expressive writing or journaling has been shown by various studies uh, that it really helps uh, in in beating depression in improving one's mood and in overall uh, functioning of the person so that's the fifth tip that i would like to share now moving on, uh, the next tip again is listening to upbeat or relaxing music. So again, uh, we all know the power of music, right? So again, music has the power to really influence, to really affect one's mood. So on days that I'm feeling really stressed out or when I'm in a bad mood, I like listening to, depending on my mood, I like listening to upbeat or, or if I'm in a really stressed out uh, uh, situation I, I like listening to peaceful or relaxing music so again that's the kind of power that uh, music has on one's mood now I actually came across uh, a very interesting research study uh, that actually showed that when you listen to hip-hop music it can help you beat depression so that was a very interesting study and it actually shows the power of music in dealing with, uh, with a very serious mental health issue like depression. So that's another tip. Now the next tip that I would like to share is caring for and spending time with your pets. Now when I spend time with my pets, when I, when I, when I start caring for my, for my pets, when I spend time with my pets, it instantly helps as a as a mood booster and uh, spending time with them has uh, has really improved uh, my mood uh, every day and and a lot of uh, pet owners would would actually tell you that that spending time with their pets being around their pets keeps them from feeling lonely now again uh, Maybe this was two years back, I actually came across another article in a newspaper. And uh, this article talks about how spending time with your pets, having pets can actually help beat depression. And in that one person actually talks about how caring for and worrying about her dogs kept her from committing suicide. Now the next tip is decluttering. Now again, decluttering is a very powerful tip that I have found to be very effective. Uh, I believe that when you declutter your, your physical space, when you start declutter your belongings, your homes, your rooms, your physical space, I believe that it allows us to declutter our mental space as well. So again, this is a very easy tip that I would suggest all of you to start doing. Start with your room, then you can proceed to the other physical spaces. And you will actually feel the effect that it has on your mental health as well, on your mental space as well. The more you declutter your physical space, the more decluttered your mental space feels. Now, the next tip that I would like to share is having a heartfelt conversation with your circle of friends. Now, when you spend time with your circle of trusted friends, when you share deep, meaningful conversations with your friends, with your circle of friends, it means that you're opening up to people. It means that you are sharing, you're, un you're unburdening your sadness, your, your fears, your thoughts, your innermost thoughts. So again, 
having a good circle of friends having deep meaningful conversations with your friends can really elevate your mood your mental health so again that's a tip again for better mental health and the last tip that i would like to share is making someone happy now a lot of again research studies has shown that when you do something to make someone happy it in turn can help you make you feel good about yourself and it can really elevate your mood as well and and i have to tell you that even from my experience when when i give someone a small gift or or just offer a, or when i'm just offering a genuine compliment to someone i can actually feel the happiness and that makes me happy and that makes my day so again i would suggest that you try making someone happy and see if that actually helps you feel better about yourself and helps improve your mood so these are a couple of tips that i have come up with for caring for your mental health so i hope that the take away from this um, short speech that i have prepared today will help you inspire uh will help you inspire to do one thing at least one thing this world mental health day and i hope that we can all make a promise to look after our mental health thank you